Hey guys, welcome to MathsPays.com, looking at IB Studies SL set notation today. Bit of an introduction, so if you have looked at this guys, bit of a refresher. Uh, mainly going to be going through notation as it says there. So what I've started off by doing is giving you um, a set of numbers. Okay, so in this case it might be um, the numbers on a dice. And you can see that I've enclosed these numbers by sort of brackets. You might have another set. Um, let's use some even numbers, let's say 2 and 4. So now I've got two different sets of numbers. Um, that's basically what a set is. But of course, if I want to talk about each individual set, it's not a bad idea to use a capital letter to represent that set. So I can talk about set A and maybe set, uh, let's say set T. So I've got two different sets. Now if I want to talk about an individual um, number within that set, what we might do is talk about an element or a member of that set and often we use the symbol looks like an E I guess it works out well for element doesn't it and so for example I could say that 2 is an element of A um, now what happens if I want to talk about something that was not an element so for example if I want to talk about 1 and talking about set T for example what we might do instead of saying it is an element just like an equal sign, we can use not equal to. So it's not an element. So not an element or not a member. So I'm going to use a little, that little E. I'm going to put a line through it. So 2 is an element of A, but 1 is not an element of T. Okay, sometimes, not usual, but sometimes you might get a, um, a set that's empty. Okay, or it's even represented by like an, an O with a line through it. Um, and that just means it's called an empty set. Okay, which has obviously has no elements. Now you're going to come across some interesting uh, sort of numbers uh, and letters. We're going to introduce something a little bit different now. Again, uh, this is going to look uh, a little bit strange, but you may have seen these before in textbooks. But just a couple of different, um, I guess, number sets. So let's write heading down um, special number sets. And again, you probably have seen this throughout um, the last few years, but you may not have known what they actually meant uh, to represent. Now this one has an N, but it kind of looks like it has two sort of lines there. Okay, now this N means that we have uh, basically a set of natural counting numbers. Now, wonder what you might think of what means natural counting numbers. Well, we're talking about things such as our number system, we start at zero, we have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, five, etc. And it goes up obviously to infinity, it doesn't stop. So we call that the natural numbers or the natural counting numbers. You may have seen this one, this one we've uh, used quite a lot over the years. Um, again, it's like a Z with that extra line there. Um, and what that refers to as all the integers. Now hopefully you remember what an integer is. So an integer is a positive or negative whole number, but it also includes zero. So we could look at numbers such as minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, and obviously it goes infinity to each other side or infinitely. So our little z there means all integers. Now we can talk about, I guess, the positive integers, which means we have our plus and we might have our minus there as well. So again, they're different sort of uh, letters there that mean different things. A couple extra ones we have. Um, we often have this other guy, which looks very similar, but it's a Q. But again, it's like a, a block letter Q. Now what that represents are all rational numbers. Now hopefully you might remember what a rational number is. Um, it's a number that can be written as a fraction. Okay, now mostly whole numbers because think 2 can be written as 2 over 1. But you could also have 0 0.6 because that can be written as 6 over 10. Um, but you might remember it isn't um, 
isn't like things like square root of 2. Because if you put square root of 2 into your calculator, it's irrational. It means you can't um, write as a fraction when you press your SD key. So that's not rational. So Q means we have rational numbers. And then one of the last ones we're going to look at is an R. Okay. And they mean we're talking about real numbers. Okay, now that's basically any number that exists. Okay, so we're talking about rational numbers, we're talking about irrational numbers, we're talking about absolutely everything. We again, we can have a plus or a minus attached to that. Okay, um, just like that, just like we had with our, uh, our other numbers there, our integers, it can be written the same way. So again, you're going to see these symbols these notations, I guess, and you need to be aware of what they're asking because certainly in the IB, they will use these in the questions and ask you to talk about certain numbers. Um, particularly when we start working into our Venn diagrams, these things are important. Now, there are a couple of little other things that you might need to be aware of. Um, certainly, you might be looking at uh, counting the number of elements. Um, the number of elements in a uh, set. Again, very basic, but just it's important to know because you might see it and you like what's going on there. Um, so for example, we had that set before. Uh, we had A equals, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And if you want to write what the number is of the set of A, we would just say 6. Okay, but the N represents the number of the elements in set A pretty basic. Um, now we call that a finite set because we have only six numbers there. Okay. As opposed from, we mentioned with some of the sets of, let's say we look at the sets of um, our natural number system. Okay. So that would be things like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it keeps on going forever. We would call that an infinite set okay or infinite set um, because they kept on going it's it always continues now let me move on to maybe the second last thing um, we're going to look at what we refer to as subsets okay now subsets they're quite basic but certainly the, the terminology that they use is quite challenging to understand sometimes. So let's say we've got two sets. I'm going to use the same set as we used at the beginning. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I'm going to use set B. Um, we used it before as 2 and 4. Okay. Now, let's say, for example, looking at this, what, what do you recognize? Recognize that B, okay, set B sits inside set A. They have those things that are common. So what we actually say is that that B, and we use this little terminology, this little, looks like a sort of a, a sideways U shape. And we put a line underneath it and we put A, which means that B is a subset of A. Okay, basically it sits in in between A. Now, obviously, if I had chucked in another one here, let's say, for example, we throw in C and we put in 1 and 6. Now, do you reckon, look at uh, C and A, do all the numbers go in? Yes, they do. Okay, so C is now a subset of A. What if we now throw in D and we use 2 and 8? Do 2 and 8 both occur into A? No, they don't. So now what we can say is D is not a subset of A. Okay, they have to be, all those numbers that are in the one we're looking at must occur inside that initial set. What happens though, if we have all the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now that's a bit silly, isn't it? Let's call that um, E because you can see that all the numbers occur. So we say that E is a subset of A, obviously. However, we then bring in another term because you kind of think that's a bit ridiculous. They're the same set, right? They're exactly the same numbers. So they bring in this terminology called a proper subset. 
All right. Now, a proper subset is a subset that not every single number occurs. And what they would do, they would just drop off that little line. So I could also write the following. I could write that B is a proper subset of A. C is a proper subset of A. But I cannot write that E is a proper subset of A because every single number occurs in there. Okay, I could also um, say that D is obviously not a proper subset of A because it doesn't actually occur. It's not even a subset. All right. So we have a difference between a subset and a proper subset. Okay, so versus a proper subset. So obviously, um, if all the elements occur in the one we're looking at, okay, it is a subset. But certainly if they occur one less, then we refer them to as a proper subset. All right, so I know that sounds all really confusing. Um, I'll certainly go through that in class if you need a little bit more help with that. Um, I'm only going to go through probably another thing here, um, and I'm going to finish off. I'm mindful I want to keep under the 15 minutes. I'm already over 10 minutes. Um, okay, so just unions. And again, you would have seen this within probability um, in an intersection. Okay, we've all seen pro uh, probability questions that might say the probability, um, let's say we have a one or a two is rolled. We might have a, a probability question that we have a one and a head is rolled. Okay, when we roll a coin and a dice, etc., etc. So basically, when we talk about uh, the probability of one or the other happening, okay, so the probability um, of one or the other. We use a symbol, okay, with a little like a U shape, like that, all right, PU. Um, if we're looking at the probability of and, okay, what we use is the U upside down, so an N. So for example, if I'm looking for the probability, let's say we've got P and Q, they're the two things that are occurring. If I want P or Q, we do P and that little U shape, and then we do our Q. If I want P and Q, then I'm going to turn upside down and then do it that way. Um, the easiest way maybe to think about it, and has an N in it, right? So maybe that can be a way that you can think about it as that looks like an N. So P and Q versus P or Q. And of course, throughout the next few lessons, guys, we'll be going through lots of that practical ways. Um, and last thing, I will go through one last thing, and that is looking at a disjoint, a disjoint set. Okay, so two uh, sets are disjoint, or I guess we could also use the word mutually exclusive, you might be sort of more used to that, mutually exclusive, um, when they have no common elements. So no common elements. So for example, I could use a set A, let's say one and two and three, and then I can use a set B, which is like um, eight and 10. And we'd say that these are disjoint sets, okay? Disjoint sets, because there are no elements um, within this. Um, so they're disjointed, all right? I think a word disjointed means doesn't really work well. Um, there's a problem there, so we, uh, we, yeah, we say disjointed or exclusive, excluding, neither works, all right? Look, there's a lot of terminologies there, guys. There's huge amounts of symbols that you need to um, memorize and remember, but obviously using them in all the next couple of lessons, you'll get a bit more fluent with it, but certainly not a bad idea to, to write a little bit of list down with all those terms in it. You can get it from your textbook um, or make some notes in this lesson. I hope this made a bit of sense. Um, Please watch the next few episodes um, because it will get you used to working with um, with notation and sets and then building towards our Venn diagrams and more challenging questions. Have an awesome day, guys. That's our set notation for IB Studies SL. Have an awesome day.